Hi, I am JD, a project management coach from ZN Consulting. In this video, we will touch the surface of risk management in projects. And keep in mind, there will be follow-up videos on stakeholder management, scope management, communication management and schedule management in this series. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss that out. Let's get started. Here is a question I have on risk. Let us see whether you can answer it. Which of the following is a way of transferring a risk to someone else? You don't have to be a project manager to answer this question. You can go by the meaning of these words. 1. Mitigating a risk. 2. Hiding the risk. 3. Avoiding the risk by changing the plan. or 4. Ensuring against the impact of the risk. You will get the answers by the end of this video. Let's start from the very basics. What is a risk? Risk is a future event that may impact your project. Look at the highlights here. Future and may. A risk is always in future tense. If an anticipated risk happens in the present, then it is not considered as a risk. It is rather considered as an issue. Example, the services team may deliver their component late, which will indirectly impact our delivery timelines. Clearly, this is a future event, which is uncertain at this point of time. Another major misconception among team members is that risks are only negative. You can also have risks with positive impacts. Remember, a positive risk is called as an opportunity and a negative risk is called a threat. A project manager should consider both positive and negative risks. So how do you measure a risk? A risk is measured as a combination of two primary factors, probability and impact and you need to calculate both those factors in order to track your risks. Where do you track your risks? The official term for the document where you track your risk is called as a risk register. This can be your excel sheet, can be your word document or your Jira backlog in agile projects. Whatever works for you. Here is one example of a risk register in an excel sheet. You can see that so far we can see three negative risks and one positive risk with descriptions filled in. We will fill other fields as we go through the video. So where do you find risks? Pretty much from everywhere. The more important question is, from when do you start searching for risks in your projects? Ideally, you'll start looking for them right when you author the project charter document. From there on, in every activity in your project, you would try to identify possible risks. It is important that risks are identified as early as possible in their life cycle. Remember, risks can potentially become issues if not responded to on time. We can summarize risk management in projects easily in five steps. Identify, analyze, prioritize, respond, monitor. Let us go through them one by one. This is where you notice and acknowledge a risk. You can use tools like SWOT analysis to begin with. Assumptions log is also a good source of risk. You would also use every meeting in your project to identify possible risks. Remember, all identified risks are listed in the risk register document. Here is where you assess the probability and impact of the identified risks in the risk register. And for that, there are two types of risk analysis. The shorter and simpler version is called qualitative risk analysis. Here, you measure probability and impact on a simpler scale. Like for example, you can use a scale like high, medium, low. You can see here in our example, marked against every risk. The longer and mathematical version of analysis is called quantitative risk analysis. Here, you use numerical values for assessment. Like for example, a risk can be assessed to be 80% probable and with an impact of $100,000. You might have noticed here that we are not using subjective scale, but actual numbers. And here is how it would look against our risk register. So which analysis should we use? Typically. Qualitative risk analysis is used for risks related to day-to-day -day activities right? where the impact is not huge and this analysis is not time consuming. Quantitative on the other hand is time consuming and is used where you need to take a decision which has a huge impact. For example, 
a CEO might have to decide whether he has to upgrade the existing manufacturing plant or build a new manufacturing plant. Such decisions need proper mathematical analysis for the decision maker to have higher confidence on his decision based on numbers. You may use a tool like decision tree node to arrive at a conclusion. Once you have probability and impact assessed for every risk, you now can prioritize them. You may end up identifying 100 risks and the list may be constantly changing as we go. But you will not be able to handle all 100 risks simultaneously. You would like to go after high priority risk first. And how do you decide the priority of a risk? Again, it is based on probability and impact. Some managers want to prioritize high impact risks and some want to prioritize a high probability risk or you can use a combination of both. And for that, you may need a tool like probability and impact matrix, like you can see in this example. Based on the combination of probability and impact, you can rank a risk and then prioritize the risk based on the rank. By now you have a list of risks analyzed and prioritized. It's time for you to respond to them. You need to respond to risk before it becomes an issue. And there are five popular responses for negative risks. You can escalate a risk when you do not have the authority to respond to a risk. You may escalate a risk to your manager or to your peer team member or to a department. You can avoid the risk altogether by changing the plan. If bad weather is a risk for a rocket launch, you can postpone schedule of the launch, thereby avoiding the risk from happening altogether. You can transfer the risk. This is the favorite of we humans. Transferring the risk by putting the onus of the impact on someone else by paying them a premium, like how we do in insurance. Ring any bells? Yes. This is the right answer for the question we asked in the beginning of the video. You can mitigate the risk. This is probably what project managers mostly do with risks. Here, you try to reduce the impact and probability of the risk. And finally, you may accept a risk. Sometimes you cannot respond to a risk. Risks due to regulatory changes, for example, are non-negotiable. You have to accept those risks. Throughout all four previous steps, we need to constantly look out for new risks and monitor the status of the identified existing risks. There are many tools to do that. You can constantly refer to the risk register document for the status of the existing risks. You can allocate some time in every meeting or every status meeting to verify the risk status. You can use tools like risk burndown to monitor the status of the risks. Well, I haven't spoken about how do we respond to positive risks. I would like to hear your opinion on that. Go ahead and comment below. I'm curious on what you have to say. Risk management is, in my opinion, the most important aspects of project management. Remember, you start doing this right from the initial stage of the project. It all starts with, will we be able to deliver the project successfully on time and on budget? Any apprehensions from anyone here is a risk. Thank you for staying along and don't forget to subscribe so that you do not miss out on future videos. Sayonara.